All right, welcome back. Game number two here between UW Whitewater and St. Clair College about to get underway. Coastline going to be the map selection for this time by something that the Saints definitely played a lot of, but they also played a lot of Cafe, and we'd seen how that last game went, so we're going to have to see if they can step up here on Coastline, switch things up a little bit. Hibana going to be the first thing taken away for the side of St. Clair. And with that, that basically does force the side of uh, UW Whitewater to ban the Thatcher, unless they actually want to let it through, which pretty much nobody ever does, so fair enough. Defensively, probably going to see either the Mira or... Uh, well, probably going to see the Mira banned at some point. The other one is kind of a toss-up. We'll have to see in a second. Maestro actually going to get taken out instead here. One more ban. I'm, if I were to bet, I'm guessing Mira. But at the same time, you could also get rid of a Kate or something. So we'll have to see what Saints do opt to go for. If they want to let that Mira through, maybe not as painful here on Coastline. We'll have to see. And they're going to let them both through, actually, and just get rid of the Valkyrie instead. Thinking that Spider maybe just had a little bit too much uh, value on that Operator in that uh, opening game. So take it away from him instead as we now get ready to hop on in here. See if the Saints can make this happen. Going to start things off on Hookah. Okay, there we go. Of course, St. Clair going to be on the defensive side of things this time by seeing a much different uh, set of operators for this round. And actually, to be honest, same thing here for the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater as lots of different operators compared to what we saw during the uh, cafe matchup. Going down list here, Boomin is going to be playing the gridlock for a little bit of anti-roamer protection alongside Wordy. Looking to maybe do a little bit the same thing, making sure Saints are trying to get aggressive. No cheeky style coming out from... They're going to shut that down. And then Ripple on the Nomad. There is going to be no room for roamers here in this uh, game at all here for St. Clair. Spider going to be playing the Capital, constant utility, very solid operator. And then Parker, back to uh, hard breach duty. Going to be back on the ace at the same time. We saw, I believe it was in the last game, just because you're the support of uh, Hard Breacher doesn't mean you can't be the MVP, as he did lead off that game. On the side of St. Clair, of course, we have Big Pop on the Jaeger. We have Impact playing Smoke. We have Zombie Dude picking up the Echo. Bonk Bonk on the Mozzie. And Char is going to be picking up the Maluzi. Yeah, impact on the smoke is something we've seen a little bit more commonly throughout the season so far. Whether it be in uh, the Face It League or here in Collegiate R6. So it was kind of surprising when impact didn't start off the, the series on that operator. But it was only two rounds, so fair enough. Boomin making his way over with the rest of the squad. Ripple's going to be leading the charge here alongside, I believe that is Wordy, not too far away. Of course, going to be looking for some footprints, get the call out onto one of the Saints if they aren't careful. In fact, they're going to take care of the ADS, I believe. No, that wasn't Impact. So who is on the other side there for St. Clair? We'll have to see here in a second. It's going to be a couple smokes, but it's not going to be the, the poison variety. We get a lot of damage coming down. Can't even necessarily see what's going down. That is actually the Smoke Impact going to be finding himself one elimination here. Getting kind of chased down, but at the same time, Parker is going to be able to put that Diffuser down. Air Jab going to stop Impact, or not Impact, somebody else actually was right there. But you can see all of these spike strips basically here from the gridlock of Boomin going to slow things down. And those things hurt like hell if you walk on it. That being said, though, Big Papa finds himself another elimination. It's going to be all up to Boomin and Ripple to get things started, and that's a good start. They do take down Big Papa. It's going to be Ripple who finds that one. Counter Defuse is in progress, and he's going to be successfully able to stop that. St. Clair get round one. 
here on Coastline. Impact having himself a bit of an exciting round that time by. Some early smokes really came into some solid value for him. Able to get one elimination, really slowed down the initial dif uh, diffuser plant as well. Made it rather awkward, actually, for the side of UW-Whitewater to make their move. So, solid job there from the Saints. Good job there on Impact as well, and the rest of the Saints as well. See if they can keep this one up. Oh, well, ain't that cute. Interesting stuff coming out here from Bonk Bonk. No, Mosey, this time it's going to be the Alibi, actually. So, looking to get cheeky here on this UW squad. Of course, Alibi being able to basically plant clones of herself. And if you shoot the clone, you get your, your own position exposed. Really relies heavily on mind games and proper positioning. So, I'm actually going to be extremely interested seeing where he opts to pop down some of these holograms. Did see one right outside the window, but that's kind of a predictable position. But at the same time, since Bonk Bonk did six pick over to this alibi, it does mean that the side of IUW Whitewater do not know this operator is even in the game. So, might be able to get maybe one or two uh, people to shoot the hologram before they call it out. It's like, wait a second, this isn't right. I just got exposed. Um, careful when you shoot kind of thing. But at the same time, then you're making them nice and worried as they go in for their attack. Boomin going to just blow through that window like it's nobody's business. Looking to start making the move. Right on the outside of the DJ booth, of course. And Spider alongside here with him, and of course... We've seen this a bunch on Cafe as well, just one of the main uses of Sledge, just being able to blow through the floor and being able to get those top-down angles. Make your own little uh, rotation holes as well. And just make it extremely uncomfortable for any of the Saints members to try and stay under. Of course, a hole in the floor is two ways. You could very well get blasted through it, and now we're going to actually see it right then and there, as it's going to be Zombie Dude. On the Echo, going to take care of Boomin to start off this uh, defensive side. And Zombie Dude is going to end up going down here, Ripple going to find the finishing blow there. Shots fired from Spider, not going to find anybody, but Ripple's going to find himself a second one as Impact's Mute is going to get taken down. Parker opening fire, looking maybe to take care of uh, one of the gadgets. Nobody from the Saints actually home as of this moment. Of course, those Banshee devices from... Charles and Maluzi are bulletproof, so you, you have to use an explosive or go over and melee it, which is definitely irritating considering it just slows down your movement speed, so and going over to melee it can sometimes be a problem. Attackers have located a bomb. Ripple, shots fired, it's over towards Bonk Bonk, not going to take care of him as of yet. Down to about half health, the Jackal being quite a nuisance here for the side of St. Clair as well. Okay, Big Papa taking a second of damage, but nothing too crazy. One of the players down, Charles and Big Papa are going to find themselves each an elimination to bring this to a 3v2. 20 seconds still left to go. Diffuser is in the hands of Parker. Last one standing here. This map just might have been the difference maker to start things off here for St. Clair. Can Parker manage to find himself a 1v3? It would be quite epic, but it's not going to be the case. As soon as he hops through the hole, he is going to get blasted by Chars. And I'll say this, even though that first game from the Saints did not necessarily go in their favor, one of the players that was at least popping off kind of early was Chars, and it's good to see him kind of keeping that up here going into game number two and getting the Saints on the... Uh, 
the right sign of the wind column for a couple of these rounds. Two in a row. Now looking for the uh, blue bar, but at the same time, we do have a DC. Can I get the pause in time? Unfortunately, one of the players on the sign of UW Whitewater will continue. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunate there for the sign of UW Whitewater. Going to have to play this one a player down. Low key proud of myself to get that pause rate on zero 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 zero. Perfect timing, but it wasn't even necessary. No alibi this time here for Bonk Bonk. Going to be back to the Mozzie, and fair enough. I don't really feel like that alibi maybe got the value that maybe he was looking to try and pull off. Maybe just a nice quick one and done kind of deal. Located by attackers. Ten seconds to go. Five seconds remaining. I will get to see, of course, what this UW Whitewater squad can pull off, even though they are a player down. Definitely possible still, but of course, the 4 and 5 right off the start. Like, basically playing with a successful, uh, when a successful run out happens against you. So, winnable, but we'll have to see as we move along here. We're going to find out one of those, uh, those pest launchers there from uh, Bonk Bonk's Mozzie. Parker has returned, so he will be back in here for the next round. Of course, the beauty of games being online, sometimes those DCs can happen. Make things a little messy, but the show does have to go on, especially if the round is already in progress. Nobody on the side of UW on the move inside the building, at least until now. Boom, and gonna finally... Make his way in. Still plenty of time, however. I say finally as if it's been forever, but yeah, there's still two minutes left on the clock. UW Whitewater squad have plenty of time to make their move. Smoke screen out. The Spider up to the high ground alongside Rippled, and actually Boomin found an opportunity to get this diffuser down. Can he stick it? Not going to be the case. Going to absolutely eat a Nitro Cell for his troubles. Big Papa going to find himself a kill as well. Onto Wordy. One goes down, that is going to be Bonk Bonk going down. Rebels kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, but a nice little one tap there onto Zombie Dude. Might be the opportunity he needs to get this thing planted. I don't think there's anybody here that can actually really contest him, but actually, never mind. Somebody was here, he held his fire for just a second, but as soon as Spider comes around the other angle to make this a 2v2, this is go time. Get that diffuser planted and force St. Clair's hand. Spider going to take the outside for the, uh, the post-plant position. We then have Big Papa looking to make his move in, but he's got to kind of wait for Char's air jab. Going to make things really messy here, and he is going to go down. It's going to be all up to Char's. Beautifully executed here for UW, even though they are the player down. Nitro Cell, fire away, makes contact with Rippled one on one. But at the same time, Spider does not have to show himself at all. Just wait until the last couple seconds, force him to try and make the defuse attempt, and right when you think he's going for it, peek out, easy peasy. Nicely done there from UW Whitewater. Player down, doesn't matter. Beautifully executed, got that diffuser down, and found themselves solid post-plant positionings. Tight angle there from uh, Spider as well to take care of that one. And now it is two to one.
Now, of course, enough rounds have passed by that will allow Sinclair to go back to the second floor hookah lounge, which, of course, this is where we saw impacts kind of pop off a little bit earlier during the first round. It's going to keep the same sort of setup, but instead of the mozzie, they're thinking about something different. A couple six picks going around instead of the jackal. Thinking about IQ, that's not locked in yet. And then Saints took away the mozzie to bring the pulse out for the first time. And this entire series, of course, being able to essentially shark people with that heartbeat sensor. And it makes firing off some nitro cells after the fact nice and easy if you can spot somebody out from... Uh, beneath the floor or through a wall or something like that. I'll tell you what, after a round like that, when you come back from a 4v5 right off the start and you still manage to execute everything perfectly, if there was ever a momentum swinger, that would definitely be it. It's a nice little kick to the shins to St. Clair and then just an absolute morale booster for the side of UW Whitewater. And we're actually going to see Boomin looking to find somebody. He takes care of Bonk Bonk. That pulse is going to be completely rendered ineffective. And nicely done here from Boomin as well. Finding all of these mute jammers there with his scanner. ADS getting taken down as well. And just gadget after gadget here from St. Clair just getting absolutely deleted. And then with that, it does allow the rest of the UW squad to start making their move and feel comfortable about it. They're not going to run into... Jammers. They can drone into the site and be completely fine. Whichever uh, hard breaching gadget they want to use, they can use right away. And we're going to see actually Parker getting right on top of that. Some of those ace chargers are already getting in, doing some damage. Five on three in the favor of UW. Still in minute 30. They have a bunch of time on the clock for them to make the move. And to be honest, they can also spot out whenever the, uh, the Saints are on their phone looking at cameras. So that can also pick out somebody and make for a nice little cheap shot of sorts. It's definitely something to keep in mind as we do continue to ride along here with Boomin. That being said, though, Impact is going to get himself into a bit of trouble. But the rest of the Saints just get completely melted. So a beautiful, flawless round for UW Whitewater. Spider just absolutely popped off. I don't know what the heck happens here. We're going to get ourselves another watch. Does find Zombie Dude. Does take care of another one right off the bat, too. Nice little double to clean things up. And with all those gadgets gone, you can just charge on in and just blast everybody without feeling or fearing any consequence beautifully done from uw whitewater they're back on their winning ways it looks like and that could be troublesome here for st Clair if they don't get this back under control we're all tied up at two but we know how their attacks have been so far in this series so if anything, I want to see as many wins as possible right here, right now, on the defensive side of things. Try and get themselves another two. Only have to win two, or th no, only have to win three attacks compared to having to try and win four. That being said, though, this is Coastline. It's not Cafe, so they could have an absolute, completely different strategy. Which could be very well super effective, but you never know. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. Going down to the first floor this time by, we're going to see Zombie Dude this time on the Goyo. One of the first times I think we're seeing him here for the Saints, at least, in this one. Of course, oh, that bright red thing looks nice. Oh, I want to shoot it, but uh, don't shoot it when you're right next to it. Of course, that'll blow up and then the entire floor will be on fire. And you'll cook yourself. Five 
Five seconds to insertion. Attackers must locate and defuse a bomb. A little bit of a back and forth to start out round number five here. Ripple to trading with somebody, but nobody making contact with the other. Oh, did spot somebody. Ripple just ever so slightly slow on the gun, however. Booming on the inside. Wordy right behind them as well. Ripple's getting smoked, however. Wordy's taking some damage as well. Back for battle is going to go in favor of Ripple Tower. Does take care of Big Papa. His ADS is already down, granted, but at the same time, sucks that he's down already. Spider up on the top floor. How the heck did he spot that one out? That was a beautiful shot there from Spider. Direct headshot onto Bonk Bonk. Would have definitely had to have been droned out, because that was insanely accurate, to say the least. A bomb has been located. El job is ready. Oh, zombie dude getting open fired upon, but hangs on tight. There's somebody right abo above him. I believe that's booming there on the IQ. Nitro Cell waits for it, looking for his opportunity to strike. Does get a little bit of damage. That is onto Spider, actually. Wordy going to find another. There's going to be the Goyo Shield. It's going to knock Boomin down, and I think Wordy is going to end up going down as well. But not without taking charge, and Wordy actually does end up keeping himself in this game. Zombie Dude does find Wordy, eventually finishing him off. Knocked him down, going to get the finishing blow. Don't even know if he really has opportunity to try and uh, get there, as we do see Parker get the Diffuser down. Zombie Dude knows where he's at, but Parker knows too, and that's going to be another win. It's going to be round three going into the favor of UW Whitewater. Okay, with that one not going their favor, they're going to try the blue bar instead here for this final round of defense. Unfortunately, there for Saints, not going to be able to go back to Hookah, which was the main one that they could, for the most part, was winning on. Actually, no, never mind. They did lose that last Hookah round where uh, Boomin cleared out all the devices pretty convincingly quick, and then uh, UW was just able to just charge right in. So, Saints are running out of opportunities here on the defensive side of things, but granted, they only have one more round of defense left. We'll get to see what their attack looks like going into the next round. But we'll have to see if they're going to go into their attacking side of things as a tied 3-3 game. Or if they're going to be down by 2. Okay, so round six underway. We get a little bit of a battle back and forth there from Charles and one of the members on the side of UW. Charles taking the worst of it to start things off, but hangs on tight. Lots of nitro cells in the pocket here for St. Clair, uh, for St. Clair in this lineup. Spots out one of the players and looks like where he's going to try and get the jump, but actually... Big Papa is going to find Ripples, taking care of the Nomad nice and fast. Boomin making the mood. Wordy going to find Big Papa actually taking down the gate. 
Spider going to eat a little bit of Nitro Cell damage, but not enough to take him down. Yeah, Spider would have definitely spotted that out. Not going to quite find it just yet. Could have barely see the shoes. Can find the ankles. Not quite going to find it. In fact, going to get shot from the other side. So why is on Spider to get out of dodge? But there's a Nitro Cell doing just enough damage to take him down. That being said, though, Wordy making the move on over. Sees the down Saints member. Takes care of Impact. Reload! Spots the other one as well. Right as he was tucking back in to reload, one of the other Saints jumping on through. And Spider's still down from that Nitro Cell. Parker might be able to make it his way back up there and assist. He's going to be able to keep him back up. So a solid job and boom in there with the double kill. Going to take care of both Zombie Dude and Charge, which means it's going to be all left to Bonk Bonk to try and pull this one off. A tall task indeed. I'm not sure how he's going to be able to pull this one off. The 1v4, definitely difficult. His position is known. Did not quite tag the player. Does find Spider, so he's going to finally finish him off. Spider is basically no HP, however. Takes care of Wordy as well. Bonk Bonk might be making the move, but he has to be kind of quick. Here comes the Diffuser getting planted. No Nitro Cell in hand. He's going to have to do this strictly off of gun skill. Looking for his opportunity to strike, and as soon as Boomin peaks, that's going to be his third kill here of this round. Beautifully done here from Boomin and the rest of UW Whitewater. They're going to put themselves up ahead at two at the half. Okay, one way or another, we're having ourselves an interesting pick here in this game, as of course, uh, Alibi and then Oryx was thought about, but Oryx is probably going to be switched aside to Risky of an Operator. But that being said, though, Boomin still being able to bring out the Alibi and not even going to six pick into the Alibi. It's going to, like, say straight up a Saints if you, uh,. You peek one of these walls and you shoot at something, you might get yourself exposed. Tristan will follow, actually. Let's see if he's got any specific setup spots here for this, uh, these alibi drones. Looking like he's going to hang on to that for a little bit longer here, unless he's going to put it behind this shield. Probably not going to be the case, so it's going to be a bit of a surprise. Right around the pool table, we're going to see one, but while we await, it is now attacking time here for St. Clair. Let's see how their attack can muster here on coastline instead. Saints passing the, re <laughs> the recoil check and then moving on forward towards this attack. Try and drone in Big Papa more than likely. Got uh, Bonk Bonk going to spot out one of the members of UW. Char spots one as well. They will see the alibi. The actual one. Bomb located by attackers. Yes, yeah, so I mean, dude spawning a couple, and I think that was an alibi ping come out here, of course. Yeah, right on top of the pool table. You know that's not a proper uh, thing, but I actually kind of like it, though. They make it seem as if uh, there's an alibi standing behind a clone, but it's just a clone on top of a clone. That being said, though, Impact getting himself in a bit of a duel here, losing about half of his health. 
to player unknown from the other side. Finds himself in a little bit of trouble. Trying to shoot from afar. Not going to make contact with anybody, however. Bonk, bonk. A little bit of harassment from the other side. There is somebody. Going to spot him out. And he sees him do it, but not going to get the jump on them. Boom, and going to find the shot. Nicely done. However, Parker does get kind of taken down a little bit up in the high ground. As soon as Charles tries to plant the diffuser, is going to get absolutely blown up. Impact's in a bit of an awkward spot, trying to plant this right on a broken floor. There goes Zombie Dude. It's going to be all up to Impact to try and shut this one down versus five. And I don't care what your positioning is. Eventually, you're going to get flanked up. And that is going to be Parker going to finish off this round. <laughs> Recoil check coming out here from uh, from Spider onto Boomin. But W Whitewater going to find themselves round number five. And now... Once the Saints got back on the attacking side of things, they are absolute, or the UW is just absolutely killing it, it looks like. Tell you what here, if this UW squad can find themselves two more wins, that will be the end of the run here. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. Solid start here on the defensive side of things. Attackers We're seeing another Ella getting picked up, but this time it's going to be for Spider, not Boomin this time. Boomin actually sticking to the alibi, gonna pick it up again. little line there for uh, Big Papa finding that little murder hole with one of the numbers of UW Whitewater on the other side. Can somebody actually capitalize on that? They are actually going to be able to. Bonk Bonk going to find the elimination onto him. Could have spotted a shoulder. It's quite the tight angle though. Impact's getting blasted. Going to get taken down. Good shot there from Ripple. Ripple with 10 eliminations in this game. Has been absolutely tearing it up here. Bad damage going down by Wordy. Where is he getting engaged from? Sitting right on the blue bar itself, right behind the bomb, but sees a bunch of the Saints actually crossing the windowsill, trying to get as much damage as possible. Only a little bit of damage onto Bonk Bonk, that's about it.
And then Bogback actually getting blasted from the side. Who was there? It's going to be Boomin, actually. There on the Alibi, find himself a six elimination. Big Papa fighting back, however. Does finish off Wordy, who was a little bit wounded from earlier. Minute left here in this game. Zombie Dude going to start making some noise here. A little couple holes into the wall. We do see Char's looking to make a move, getting ready to pop this diffuser down at some point. But there is still a couple other members it's hovering around. Three on three. And the smoke is still alive there from Parker, so they're going to have to fight through the damage in order to get to the point where they can actually uh, plant this diffuser. Zombie Dude's going to get absolutely blasted. Ripple's going to find the jump onto him. Big Papa could be in the midst of an engagement ready to go. Char's really trying to make the outside play work. That being said, though, there was another member right around the corner. Goes through the alibi, but it's going to take Parker up at least a little bit. Big Papa going to finish the job. Could be the opportunity to get in there. He's got himself the kill onto Parker as well. One on one left here in this game. Charles is going to get this diffuser. He's going to be able to get it to stick. But then where is Boomin? Comes on in hot. Going to be able to take the kill. Finish this one off. Sure, the Saints got the diffuser down, but it does not matter. Boomin is right there, ready to go. And that's going to put UW Whitewater on match point. Defenders disable the diffuser. Bomb defusing attempt failed. Defenders win. Well, Saints, it's now or never. UWA Water one point away from finishing the job here. We've got Mira, we've got Pulse, and are they going to try and finish it with style? Bring the caveat. out. Do it for Seymour. Loki, I want to see an inter interrogation. I'm sorry, Saints. I want to see an interrogation actually get pulled off here. We'll, we'll see, though. your bombs from being defused by attackers taking a look at the scoreboard of course in this game ripple is an absolute madman sitting there in the double digits 11 to be specific just taking everybody down short to follow there's Boomin and spidey or spidey spider then there's wordy and parker supportive side of things but still getting the job done with super effectiveness for the same side of things it's big papa leading the charge in regards to eliminations but other than that it feels like Sure, he finds himself the frags, but I don't know. It's unfor unfortunately, just not quite uh, getting as much impact as I'm sure he's looking for in these matchups. And then, of course, Char sitting there with five. Bonk Bonk going to be leading in regards to the scoring, but that is a whole different beast in itself. Guardia of Saints over here behind the ruins. We'll have to see. How they try to keep themselves in this game. Of course, no more room for error. M momentum is basically shot for them. They haven't won a round since round two. They won the first two, and then it was just all downhill from there. The UW Whitewater just basically had a little bit of time, a bit of an adjusting period from Cafe over to Coastline. But ever since then, they got the ball rolling. They're doing an absolutely fantastic job. And then one operator I'm going to be looking at, of course, is going to be the Caviera. We'll have to see. He'll find himself the interrogation. Of course, that pistol will not kill a player, but it'll knock them down to the point where she can then use her ability. If she, the interrogation goes off, everybody on the Saints team gets exposed. That being said, the Rippled actually going to get taken down real quick. Saints starting things off nicely take the top fragger out before the round really gets the opportunity to get started. So just under two minutes in this round. So I'm going to keep an eye on that cami that's lurking of course. It was six to pick over too, so if the Saints weren't going to be able to spot out which operator that was, then in 
theory they still don't know this is coming. Saints are going to make a move. Here comes the Nitro Cell, instantly taking care of Chars. Right on target, Parker. Air Jab going to knock him down, but not going to uh, do any damage. Of course, there's the beauty of those uh, Mirror Mirrors. Impact with the classic uh, recoil check onto Big Papa. That's definitely frustrating. Zombie Dude coming out swinging, however. It's a one on one because Spider is actually down. Did get picked up, actually. Never mind. So, from below, Zombie Dude going to pick up the diffuser. Find a better corner to get this thing planted in. You can see that they're trying to hunt them down from behind. Take a different angle and try to get there. But where is Spider? Where is Boomin? He's just going straight through with some of these impacts. Going to make Zombie Dude's life an absolute living hell. Trying to get him down from behind. And show oh, he is going to find him through the floor. Nice check. And Spider going to finish this one off here with UW Whitewater. Taking this one in 2-0 fashion. I realized I was an absolute bot this entire series and didn't... Uh, update the scoreboard but it was just just that decisive for the side of uh uw whitewater that i'm pretty certain that everybody still understood what the, the score was prior to uh the graphics being actually updated a little bit of a dropped ball on my end there definitely apologize about that but in the end saints definitely had themselves a hard time here tonight versus this u uh, University of Wisconsin Whitewater squad as they take it 2-0. Game one, of course, seven to one. Cafe was in was definitely a tough time there for the Saints squad, and then um, unfortunately for Saint Clair, coastline did not fees much better. University of Wisconsin just took that one pretty strong as well. Took a little bit of time to actually get the ball rolling, but as soon as they did, it was just unstoppable. So. Well played there from the University of Wisconsin. Now, of course, not going to be the last we see of the Saints Rainbow Six Siege team. They still have matches basically every Friday for the next couple of weeks. See if they can get themselves to bounce back next week. But they've definitely found themselves some pretty tough competition. And I just don't know if it's been just running into some tough teams over and over again here. Or if we're a little bit on the, a little bit behind. But that being said, we still have a week ahead of us. Get back and get back stronger. And we'll be good to go, of course. But with that, there's not a whole heck of a lot of analysis I can do for this one. It's going to just be uh, University of Wisconsin Whitewater taking this in 2-0 fashion. So I'm going to just uh, say some thank yous, of course, to the sponsors. St. Clair College, Zeckelman School of Business and Information Technology, PC Outlet, <coughs> Tim Hortons, <coughs> St. Clair SRC, and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. Thank you for sponsoring us here on the St. Clair Saints Varsity Sports Team able to have these teams and have these broadcasts thank you so much big thank you for everybody tuning in i know for the hometown squad this one was a bit tough to watch but i thank you for your support here of your your players of your teams and just being here nonetheless so that you can tune into all the action day in and day out in regards to action so we're gonna catch our, us back up here on sunday for counter-strike basic csgo contenders Saturday, there would be, there is a Call of Duty match ended up happening. In fact, let's actually quickly go over the schedule. Let's actually bring that up one more time, of course. 7 p.m. It is going to be the coll Collegiate Cold War for Activision Blizzard. Looking to see if that's going to get picked up, uh, streamed somewhere. Then, Sunday, 14th at 5, of course, was Counter-Strike Face It CSGO Contenders. Monday at 8, we return with some Upsurge Minor League Playoffs. Rocket League returns on Tuesday at 5 for NECC. And then Wednesday, Play versus Trios for Fortnite makes a return. And of course, there's still many more matches to come Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. If you're looking for Rainbow Six Siege specifically, you can definitely catch us here on Friday. Because I'm pretty certain that is still uncontested for at least a little bit while. Hearthstone eventually does come back on Fridays as well. But I think that's not until two weeks. So we'll have to... Split our time between those two games. Obviously, we want to get as many teams featured here on the Saints channel as possible. But, of course, we'll go along as we go. As, uh, or we'll figure that, we'll figure that out as we go. Make sure you follow us here on the Twitch channel. Make sure that you uh, catch all the action live. 
check out the gigantic VOD library as well as a couple of additional pieces of content, whether it be team highlight videos or player interviews that are going to be short to follow here on the channel. Lots of content on our YouTube. And then check out our Twitter as well to make sure that you get all the news, updates, results, and stream schedules as they do come on out. But with that, we shall close out for the night. My name is Dan Banner, producer here at the St. Clair Saints varsity esports team. Thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you Sunday.